darlings, it's we here, and welcome to another video featuring Bakugo from Boku no Hero Academia. And Jesus Christ, if I keep doing this, I'm probably going to get a fucking aneurysm. Anyways, anyways, hi, it's Zui here. Please. Anyways, before we get right into this video, I was informed that apparently my videos are not getting sent out to all of my subscribers. In that case, please, please, please remember to like, comment, subscribe and watch the video until the end. This is the best way you can make sure that YouTube keeps me in the algorithm. And YouTube keeps paying me. Lastly, if you have a little bit, uh, you know, too much money, I would greatly appreciate a donation or you buying something off of my merch store. You don't have to, of course. That is entirely optional. Um, also, if you're new here and you think that I'm worth it, Please hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified of everything I upload. And join my beautiful darling doll army. By the way, if you have any darling doll fan art, you can post it in my Discord. I might put your fan art up in one of my videos. Anyways, let's get right into the show. You stretch your arms with an excited expression. As you leave the taxi you have been driving in for the past three hours from the airport. You adjusted your veil and straighten out your habit. The nice taxi driver was about to hand you your bags when a strange, small, white creature in an adorable black suit approached you. We have been waiting for you. I was just on the phone with your mother superior. Everything is in order. The creature reached a paw out to you. I'm Principal Nezu. You blushed. He was adorable. With a shaky hand, you took his and shook it. The pleasure is all mine. You pressed out for your teeth. Nezu then turned away to look at the taxi driver. Please bring the bags into the common room of Class 1A. For a moment the driver stopped moving. Clearly he wanted to go to his next client. Don't worry about the pay. I will double it. The man then simply shrugged and marched through the giant school gate behind Nezu, who himself turned on his heel. Please follow me while I explain the goings on at UA High. With an excited yelp, you followed the small white rodent. Meanwhile, in Class 1A, everyone was trying to contain their excitement. Mr. Aizawa, their teacher, had told them a few weeks ago that a transfer from a very prestigious girls' school in Germany would be coming. So without your knowledge, you had been the topic of discussion ever since. It wasn't often that schools from other countries were interested in sharing their potential pro-heroes. But due to recent upgrades in Germany's police force, the need for pro-heroes was declined, allowing the heroes to go international. However, to this day, this day of your arrival, Aizawa had given no further details of who you are, making the mystery even more entertaining for his class. Even though he would say that it was to protect your identity, he mostly kept it a secret for his own entertainment. Sadly, today he had to come clean. So he slammed his fists on his desk, and the whole room went quiet. The transfer will arrive any minute now. He glanced outside the window of the class, seeing one black and one smaller figure approach the building. Even though neither you or Nezu could see him, he gave a nod in affirmation. And with an almost cheerful smile, he announced, The transfer will be a girl. Nice, commented Deiki, gaining him an infuriated glare from his teacher. 
She is a small German girl sent here from the prestigious Saint Clairs Acad- Saint Clairs? Shouted Mineta into the room. All eyes were now on the pin-sized pervert. Don't tell me you never heard of Saint Clairs. They could, not even you? The green-haired boy shook his head. I mostly focused on research on heroes in Japan. He blushed. I probably missed out on so much information. He slapped his forehead. Azawa once again hit the desk. This time hard enough to leave a crack in it. Looks like Mineta has just agreed to give us a small presentation and history lesson. Come up here. Now. The way Aizawa said now unnerved the entire class. And with a whimper, the small purple-haired boy went to the front of the class. Will this be put on my record? The sadistic grin on Aizawa's face was all he needed. Then Mineta began to explain. Uh, Saint Clair was the pro-hero who pretty much prevented a civil war in Germany when Quirks first appeared, and she was this super hot angelic looking girl with a healing quirk. The girls in the class groaned upon hearing that. So he only knows about this because he's a pervert, mumbled Momo under her breath. And then Saint Claire died at the age of 120, still looking like 25, like holy shit, I saw pictures of her. She was declared a saint by the Catholic Church in Germany, and many things happened. To tell you the truth, I only know about the old goth school that was uh, created in the name of her. Mineta dropped his gaze in embarrassment and blushed. And as I was sighed. You forgot the most important thing about the school. His teacher pointed back to his seat, and the obnoxious goblin went to sit back down. <sighs> Saint Clairs is Germany's UA. It breeds top heroes, to the point where at least five of their students are always in Europe's top ten pro-hero lists. A gasp went through the class. Not even UA could manage that. This turned from a mysterious situation into an intimidating one. Puh! Growled Bakugo in the back of the class. If she thinks she's gonna be better than me, I'll kill her. Aizawa chuckled. But before he could sarcastically reply to the explosive blonde, a knock cracked through the semi-tense atmosphere of the classroom. Three seconds later, the door unceremoniously opened. There stood Nezu, with the brightest smile he ever smiled, with you behind him, still in your habit and veil. Stepping into the classroom felt alien to you. So far you had only studied inside the oppressive stone balls of St. Clair's Academy. So seeing this bright and modern-looking classroom was like seeing through a window into another world. You followed the principal silently as you two went to the front of the room next to the man you assumed was going to be your teacher. This is the new student, said Nezu excitedly, while pointing at you with his left paw. Feeling everyone stare at you in their grey UA uniforms made you feel out of place. The principal bowed before your teacher, and then to the class, and then quickly said goodbye. You were glad that your habit covered your legs. A feeling of embarrassment was going through you. To not intensify the already awkward mood, you opened your mouth to speak, when suddenly a small purple-haired boy with balls on his head jumped on his desk. I knew it! It's girls from St. Clair's are all super fucking hot! You blushed and looked at your teacher. He looked about ready to explode. Before anyone could say anything, the blonde-haired boy seated behind the little monster stood up and pushed him back into his seat. Can't you little pervert keep your voice down? The blonde pointed at you. This is already awkward enough. The little boy hit the head on the desk 
opting to simply ignore whatever was going on around him as to prevent further punishment. The teacher inhaled deeply and then exhaled, before beginning the introductions of everyone. Apparently, the blonde was named Bakugo, the purple-haired kid Mineta, and he himself Aizawa. Then each student, with the exception of Mineta, said a few things about themselves. Somehow this took some of the awkwardness away, and after everyone had finished, you introduced yourself and your quirk. My quirk is called no longer human. You look down on the ground for a moment. It isn't really a cheerful quirk. Basically, it's a mind control quirk that gives its targets hallucinations, which causes them to attack anyone on sight. An uncomfortable silence followed. Oh, how does it work? spouted a green-haired boy that introduced himself as Midoriya. Uh, what? He pulled out a worn notebook, pencil in hand. Aizawa chuckled at that and then pointed to a seat in the corner opposite to Mineta's. That one is yours, but it doesn't really matter. Once per month, everyone just seems to sit somewhere else. He gave him a questioning look. He didn't seem like the type of teacher who would allow this. Look, Nezo said I can no longer suspend an entire class unless it's something serious. A red-haired student called Grishima chuckled at that. The next few days passed by you in a flash. You were made aware uncomfortably quick of the school's rules. Especially its unwritten ones. And somehow you managed to become friends with everyone in your class, including Mineta, who thanks to a very controlling and rather terrifying girlfriend was decently nice to you, excluding some sudden outbursts of perversion that never got past occasional comments and your looks. While this was nice, there was someone who always seemed to ghost around you. And that was the explosive blonde Bakugo. You didn't mind, though. He certainly was eye candy. Plus, his rough behavior kept people quiet around you, which you enjoyed. However, this pleasant introduction to your new school was suddenly ripped away one rainy evening. A blue-eyed, snobby guy from Class 1B had approached you, nose raised, his mood in high heavens. His words stung. Of course, the guy was well known in Class 1A and 1B. The problem was that right now you were alone in one of UA's hallways with him. Stay away from Monomoa, was what everyone said. While your verbal exchange was short, it ended with him shoving you into a wall. Pain surged through your body for only a moment, but that was already enough. A pained wail was coming from the boy, and you turned to face him. His hands were covering his ears, foam slowly dripping out of his mouth. You wondered how long it would last. You wondered, will I be expelled? Monomoa got on his hands and knees and began crawling on the floor, trying to get away from you. Whatever your quirk made him see must terrify him more than his willingness to hurt, which was rare. The nightmare lasted only for two minutes. But that was enough to get the attention of the entire school. After that, you were an outcast. Rumors spread like wildfire. And there was nothing you could do about it. In the end, you had gotten detention for about a month. Since Monomoa had started it, he himself was just sent to the nurse's office for recovery. During his outburst, he had scratched deep wounds into his arms and face. And the entire mood around you had changed. 
people were avoiding you. Especially the boys, who you had a pleasant relationship with before. Sure, your own class was an exception, but even they became more tense around you. With the exception of Bakugo. This incident just seemed to make him more interested in you. He would patiently wait outside of the classroom for you and personally take you back to the dorms. Aizawa sighed as he looked at his watch. It's time. He scribbled something into his notes. You can go back to the dorms or whatever. Try not to get hurt by someone. Uh, also, he scratched something out on his notes. This was your last day of detention. He paused and looked at you. Sorry this had to happen, but... The kid's parents would have lost their shit... Mind. You suppressed a smile. He really wanted to say shit. If we wouldn't have punished you... Uh, anyways, your boyfriend's probably waiting. B boyfriend? You thought. Surely he meant Bakugo. But you two weren't a couple. Wait, were you two a couple? With a slight blush, you took your things and left the classroom. Surprise, surprise. Leaning next to the wall was Bakugo. Like a zombie, he was staring at his phone, occasionally swiping or pressing down on the display. Hey, you said cheerfully. He looked up and smiled at you. Hey, ready? You nodded in response, and the two of you began trotting. While having a pleasant conversation. Mostly about his deepest yet weirdest secret. Western animation and anime. As long as it was drawn and moved on a screen, he liked it. In fact, he loved it. Because of this, you two had started discussing ideas for your own show and spent countless hours sitting together in both school, library and the dorms just talking. This was something only meant for you and him. Once you reached the outside, he pointed towards the bench. Hey, uh, let's take a short break. Confused, you simply nodded. He sighed once you two sat down. There's something I wanted to ask you for a while. It was rare for him to switch the topic off of cartoons. Did you use your quirk on purpose against Monomoa? You opened your mouth. You were slightly shocked that he actually believed the rumors. I didn't do anything. You were hurt and wanted to leave. He pushed me into a wall. That's just how it works. His mouth cocked up into a semi-smile. Just wanted to hear your version. He rubbed his hands. Was wondering if you'd like to give me a taste. What? You didn't know what to think. Was this a trick? He chuckled. Look, I've been sort of taking this... Not serious. And, like, I want to know how serious this actually is. Since day one, I wanted a taste of your quirk. His face turned into an amused grin. How can I beat all these extras in our class if I can't deal with a little bit of mind-bending? You felt offended. Used. Was this his school all along? At least he didn't punch you to immediately find out. You didn't know if you should feel relief or anger. At least this wish of his wasn't meant to be in malice. Only if we do it in the gym, where no one is around but me. As soon as the word me left your lips, his hand wrapped around yours. Like an excited child, he shouted, Then what are we waiting for? 
It was as if you two teleported. He ran at such speed you'd only seen Ida achieve. You found yourself in a training gym, designed by the hero All Might. A vast desert of rock pillars and an artificial sun radiated incredible heat down at the two of you. He rubbed both of his hands. <sighs> you are way too excited to hurt me. The look on his face was priceless. It was a mix of apologetic frown and disappointed sigh. Uh, sorry, I... I wasn't thinking right. You smiled at him. <laughs> God, why are you so perfect? His eyes widened. I... I didn't... Uh, fuck. He blushed. And... Then you blushed. Did... Did you just confess to me? He looked away. His muscles tensed up. So did yours. I just ruined the mood, did I? You took a step closer and tried to grab his arm. But he slapped it away. Ow! You pressed through your teeth. He probably used more force than intended. Wait. Ow? With a frightful expression, you looked at the explosive blonde. His pupils had widened to a point where there was no crimson left. He wasn't moving. His hands were shaking. Tears began to form. Then he bit his lower lip. His mouth quivered. A small droplet of blood began to run down his chin. Then his eyes focused on you. An animalistic growl coming from him. Unlike Monomoa, who was secretly a coward, the effect on Bakugo was the one you had originally expected. He growled again, like a monster. Before you could run away, he pounced on you. You hit the ground hard, coughing out air. If he would keep hurting you, he might never get out of his frenzy. His right hand turned to a fist. He was about to hit you square on your face. And then your body acted on its own. With all your strength, you wrapped your hands around his throat. You knew from experimentation at St. Clair's that stopping the air supply for someone frenzied was speeding up the process of getting them back to normal. Tears of panic were spewing out of your eyes as you choked the man on top of you. You kept choking him until his muscles softened. And he fell on top of you. For a moment it was silent in the gym. Only your quiet sobs and heavy breathing echoed through the halls. Until loud coughing erupted from the blonde. Bakugo! You exclaimed both happy and afraid. Fuck! <coughs> After noticing he was lying on top of you, you jumped up, only to immediately turn around and vomit on the floor. Oh, fuck! <coughs> what the hell? I'm sorry, you cried. Jesus, <coughs> Joseph. I'm, I'm sorry. Your crying turned into loud wailing. No, <coughs> no, stop, he shouted. Suddenly you felt a muscular arm around your shoulder and stomach. Stop crying, please. His voice was hoarse. But I almost... Yes, almost. <laughs> I almost did the same. You looked at him through tearful eyes. His image clouded by the liquid. No, I can't. This was... Something interrupted your panicked shouting. Something soft and warm. 
was pressed on your lips. And your heart felt like it was about to burst. You huddled closer to him. And carefully, you wrapped your arms around his muscular chest. He was an amazing kisser. Then again, you didn't know anything to compare. St. Clair's was an all-girls school after all. After a while, he let go of you. I'm sorry, might you go through this? He whispered into your ear. You looked into his eyes, back to their regular form. Your handprints were beginning to make themselves known around his throat. I'm sorry, you said. Stop apologizing. You blushed. You might have the quirk of a supervillain, but you yourself are the most wholesome thing I've ever laid eyes upon. When did he learn these difficult words? With quivering lips, you explained. In Germany, there is a saying. Get yourself a St. Clair's girl and die a happy man. <laughs> I can see why. He thought for a moment. Ugh. My head really hurts. Do you know what would help me? You knew that he didn't mean pills, so he kept quiet. Some food from that Mexican place next to UA. He grinned. <laughs> Care to join me, little saint? You gave him a sweet smile. Like a date? Or like dinner between friends? His grin widened, and your blush deepened. You didn't need him to answer. It was all written right there on his face.